What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism version 10. And today guys, we are going to be setting up the Industrial Turbine, which is a multi-block structure that's gonna allow us to convert steam into power. Now, I think that this is an absolutely awesome multi-block structure. The reason being, there are so many different ways that you can customize this thing. Now, obviously, with most multi-block structures, there's some degree of customization where you can alter a certain number of blocks in it and maybe adjust a couple things. But to give you guys an idea of how many different things can impact this one, you can assemble it with maybe nine or 10 different blocks. And almost every single one of those blocks can be used in varying quantities to change things about it, like the flow rate of the steam, the flow rate of the water, the amount of power you're actually generating per amount of steam you put in, all those different things can be adjusted. And so in the end, you can come out with a multi-block structure that pretty much fits your needs perfectly and save yourself a lot of time and hassle and a lot of resources actually setting it up so you don't have something wickedly overkill, but you have something that's able to meet your needs. Now on top of that, it looks absolutely awesome, which is always a plus. It's got some really cool animations that go along with it. So it's very important that we're gonna use a ton of structural glass today so that we can see inside and actually watch it working. Now, we really have to jump right into it because there is a ton of stuff to go over. That is the one downside about having something that is extremely customizable and has a lot of blocks that can go into it and they can all change things is that there's a lot of numbers to go over, a lot of math to go over, and things that you need to know about it, so that if you wanna set up one that is used for something slightly different than mine, that you can make it yourself and come up with all the numbers that you need in terms of block counts and things without going through too much trouble to actually figure it out. So, today we are going to be making a five by five by nine turbine to match the fission reactor that we set up last episode. But the turbine can be anywhere from five by five by five to 17 by 17 by 18. So it can vary massively in the size that you're gonna be setting it up. And the reason that you're probably gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't just set up the biggest one possible is pretty much right in front of you. It requires just for the five by five by nine, so much steel, it is almost unbelievable. Pretty much every piece that we are gonna be making today is gonna to require half a stack of steel. Um, so in here, just to get this, it took me forever to actually process all the stuff for it. And we're probably working with maybe six or you know so stacks of steel in here-ish. Uh, give or take a bit. So again, I just want to stress that this is not an early game thing to set up. And if you do set it up early, you're going to want to make it small. But we're going to go through and craft all these varying blocks up here. And like I said, these are all going to be included in the build in varying quantities, depending on what you want. So we're going to be making a turbine rotor, turbine blades, electromagnetic coils, saturating condensers, turbine vents, turbine valves, turbine casing, structural glass, pressure dispersers, and rotational complexes. So we'll go through now one by one and we're gonna leave turbine casing um, till the very end and some other ones till the end because they require turbine casing. But some of the simple ones that we can do, we'll grab out all of this. Some of the simple ones we can start with are ones that require very few of them. Um, things like the blades and the turbine rotor. So it's very important with this one too that I make sure I do not over click on these because we are gonna be making pretty much the exact amount we need right now. And since there's a lot of duplicate materials, we might over click. So we are going to need five turbine rotors. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And for every turbine rotor, you are able to use two turbine blades. So we are going to be making 10 turbine blades so we'll click these bad boys out. There we go. Okay, so that is what's basically going to determine the amount of power we generate. Um, and for each of these, um, they're only gonna be considered, you're only gonna have technically one turbine rotor itself. They're on top of each other, but you're just gonna be making a larger one. So for every large turbine rotor, which of course you will only have one, you are going to need one rotational complex. And that's going to go right at the top of it in the build. So. We'll make one of those, and there we go. Now, the important thing to remember with this is that um, when you are making these, the number of blades, uh, which is determined by the number of rotors, is going to then determine the number of electromagnetic coils that you need. So, 
every electromagnetic coil is going to support four of these turbine blades. So obviously in this one, we don't have an interval of four. We're not going to have, you know, we're, we're, we don't have 12 right here, but we have over eight. So we're going to have to act as if we had 12. Um, so we will be making three of these for our setup. And these are going to be uh, a little bit more annoying to make because we have to use the energy tablets for these. So there we go. We got three of those. So that's great. We got down pretty much well, most of the simple things. Um, now we are going to be making the pressure dispersers. Now, the purpose of these is to fill in the, it's hard to explain, but the internal portion of the turbine on the layer that you are going to be using the rotational complex. So imagine it like this. We have a five by five for the base. And so at the level at where the rotational complex will be, the outer portion of that five by five is going to be external blocks. It's going to be potentially glass. It might be vents. It might be casing. But the internal part inside that, which of course, if you come in, is going to be a three by three, that is going to be the part that needs the pressure dispersers. So one of those will be a rotational complex. The other eight of them, because of course it's a three by three, so nine minus one is going to be comprised of pressure dispersers. So the only reason I say it like that is because if you are varying the size of this and it's not going to be a five by five, then you need to remember that you're going to need more pressure dispersers, specifically because that's just how the machine is set up. You need to make sure that it's like that because it's almost like a barrier between some of the other components of the machine and the area in it that is going to be storing the steam to be processed with the turbine. So it's almost like a cutoff point for a lot of the different components. So we will be making eight of these and there we go. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at is the saturating condensers. Now this is really where you start to get into the things that are going to affect the critical stuff because these are going to affect things like the water flow rate. So the varying quantities of these will be based, of course, on what you're setting up. So the saturating condensers, we're gonna be making six of these. So there we go, we got all six of them, and those are gonna be going uh, in the upper portion above the pressure disperser. So that's kind of what I was talking about with making those as a cutoff, is below them is gonna be the turbine, above them is going to be where we put the saturating condensers, and along with that, it's going to be where we put the vents. Now, I believe the vents we have to wait on crafting because those require turbine casing. We also are gonna to have to wait on making the turbine valves, which are going to allow us to input steam, and surprisingly, not output liquid, not output the water, but output the power from it. So. Uh, confusing a little bit, we'll go over it later, but you actually output the fluid out of a vent at the top of the machine. So, uh, but we're making two of those, but again, those require turbine casing. So I believe the only things that we actually have left are going to be the turbine casing, the structural glass, and then everything that requires turbine casing. So we'll make structural glass for this. Now, you do not need to make the sides that I do out of structural glass. I think it's a disservice to the entire modded Minecraft community to not do it because of how great it looks, but you're not required to do it. You're able to make it out of regular structural casing, or not structural casing, turbine casing, if you so choose, but imagine it for the, you know, the exact sides, not the perimeter of it, um, but the actual faces of the sides that you can make them out of casing or glass. So we're going to be making uh, I think we're going to use 58 of these, so we'll be making 60. We'll have a little bit extra, um, but there we go. And then we are also going to be making the turbine casing now, and this is where really all the money gets spent, right? You are going to require a ton of this. So even with that glass, and of course, if you use less glass, you need more casing, uh, which is just <laughs> more expensive. Um, we're going to need 78, I believe, casing for uh, just using those blocks. Then we are going to be using four casing for the turbine valve crafts. And then we're gonna be using 68 turbine casings for crafting the vents that we're gonna be using. So remember when you're crafting this, you wanna make sure you know how many you're gonna need for the subsequent crafts that require it later. So we'll be making, uh, I believe it's 152 right here, which is 38 times four. So, this should be sufficient. There we go. 
watching that steel disappear. That really doesn't feel good, but now we can go and craft our turbine valve and we're going to be using two of these. And then the last thing we need to make, I know it's been a long journey to get here, is gonna be the turbine vent. And for this, we are going to be making, uh, we're gonna be using 33 of them today, but we are gonna be making 34 because they come in batches of two. So there we go. Now we have everything we need, except I just wanna state that we need some mechanical pipes and some pressurized tubes. And if you're getting the power already and gonna be you know, utilizing that, you're gonna need some cable. But uh, we don't need to craft those today. I think we'll sleep though before we actually start working on this because again, it's a lot of stuff to set up. But now you know uh, some of the reasons that you need this stuff and I'll cover it again while we're setting it up. But um, yeah, obviously your build will most likely vary in terms of what you need for it. So it's very important that you understand why we are going to be using these things, what they're gonna affect, all that good stuff. So we're making, like I said, the five by five by nine. So I dug out an area right here. Um, just because eventually I'll make it so that we have somewhere that is actually, you know, able to hold this and have it fully visible. But thankfully, we'll still be able to see uh, a lot of it functioning. So we can go and start putting down the turbine casing. And we're going to fill in the entire bottom here right out the gate with turbine casing all the way, just like that. Now, right here, this is your base. The first important thing to know is that the size that you are using for your base is going to determine the amount of rotor height you can have. So right here, we have um, a base of five by five. Now, I know some people believe that it can be determined by the structural height, but it's actually gonna be determined um, by your base too. And so it's going to be the width times two minus five. So in this case, we are going to have a width of five. And so five times two, and obviously that's in parentheses, but uh, so 10 minus five is five. So we're using the maximum amount that we're going to have for this one. Um, and that's going to be, uh, you know, the reason, because you'll see when we start setting up the rotors, that the turbine blades get larger and larger as you go up. And so the width that is actually able to contain the amount of blades for each rotor is going to, the, the higher you get, the wider it needs to be to actually be able to hold that blade. So uh, it's a little bit hard to explain, but you'll see when we're building it up. Now, when we set up the turbine rotor, that's gonna go right in the middle of the base. So we can place this down here and we're gonna make sure we can actually get up out of here. So we're gonna place these down and if I could get some, I have some dirt here so we can actually get up and place this down for now. So we'll put it all the way up. So there we go, we got all five down right there. And what you can do now is if you grab out the turbine blades, if you just right click them on here, you can right click them on any of these, they just drop right down to the bottom. But you can see what I'm talking about here where you have two per, two per uh, turbine rotor, but they get larger as you add more. So the next one's a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And as you keep clicking them on, they get larger and larger. So as you go up, you need more width to support them. So that's an important thing to know. You you will not just be making this, you know, super skinny and wicked tall and be able to make a turbine rotor all the way up as high as you want. That's not how it's gonna work. So just a very important thing to keep in mind when you're actually gonna determine the size you want for this um, is gonna be this and the fact that this will determine how much power you get from this. Obviously there's other factors that are important, but the amount of rotors and the amount of blades you have is going to directly determine the amount of power you get per steam consumed. So in this case, because we are you know, directly comparing it to the fission reactor, for this, we are going to get per blade, per one millibucket of fizzle fuel consumed, we are gonna get 7.14 kilojoules. So right here, we've got 10 blades, so we are getting 71.4 kilojoules. If we had only one, we'd be getting 7.14. So it is a direct relation between how many blades you include in your setup, thus incentivizing you to make a bigger one um, to get more power, more bang for your buck, basically. It's not just gonna be more efficient in terms of, oh, it's able to process it faster. It's actually going to get you just in general more power. So uh, very important thing to note. So a lot of times it is possible to invest more of your money into what's actually processing the steam, in this case, 
the turbine being very large while not necessarily trying to produce more steam. Um, so you could use a very small, let's say, fission reactor with a very large turbine and actually get a, a decent amount of power. Um, and a lot of people will do it that way instead of the other way around where you are generating a ton of steam but have a much more uh, inefficient turbine. So we now have this set up. So we need to start building up here on the sides. So what we're going to do is bring the turbine casing up uh, on all the corners. And then we are going to fill in the rest of this with glass. And just because of how tall this is, we're just going to kind of um, build up like so. And I believe that obviously this doesn't necessarily need to be glass, but I might actually dig down around this and make kind of like a divot here um, so that we can see everything. Um, but I'm just going to make it out of glass anyway, because we're going to need the turbine casing for um, higher portions of this. But we can set this up and I'm actually going to fill in that hole in the ground because it's bothering me. Uh, but we will, let's grab out these smooth stone slabs right over here, fill that in. Okay, so the next part that we're going to be getting to that's going to be important is putting in the turbine valve somewhere. And we can put these in depending on where we are going to be inputting and outputting stuff. Uh, chances are we're going to want to have one over here so we can actually break the structural glass and maybe throw one down right there because we're going to be inputting stuff from over there. And chances are we're going to have our, I believe it's the induction matrix over here to store large scale power. So we might as well put one right over here, um, but you can toss those down in the sides wherever you please. And then we can continue building up here. We'll go two at a time just because we're trying to, trying to speed through this. And thankfully, I think this should be the last layer where we actually need to use uh, glass and such. So there we go. Finish this up here. And there we go. So now we've met the portion of this where the rotor ends. And so this is where the next step starts. And like I said, the rotational complex is going to be placed down right at the top of where the rotor is. So this is where everything's going to be spinning and it goes right into the rotational complex. Now, if you remember what I said, the rotational complex layer is the layer where you need to then surround it with pressure dispersers. So this is where our eight are going to go. Now, obviously the eight, like I said, are only going to cover it, but they don't cover this area out here. That is fine. This is still the external part of this. So uh, we do not need to have the pressure dispersers in the outermost layer in the wall of it. They just need to cover the internal part and separate this lower level from the upper level. So that's all set to go. Now, the important thing to remember for this is we are going to be using vents on the outside here. So uh, those are usable for the outside of this setup. Um, and we have a ton of vents to get through. So we're going to be using a bunch up here. The vents are going to determine steam flow. So just remember that the reason we have so many vents and the reason the steam flow is so high is, is because uh, we have so many vents. And um, so we have it for that reason. The condensers, we have a lot because we need the water flow to be higher. So what we're going to do is we'll set up the condensers right now uh, and we can put those right in here. So uh, right above the pressure dispersers. Now they don't necessarily need to be right here, um, but just remember that the condensers, the vents, those things, and the coils are all going to be above the uh, pressure disperser layer. Um, or at least the condensers will be up here um, and the coils will be up here. Um, we're gonna have the vents on the same layer, but uh, yeah, so the, set those up there. And then the coils, the important part to remember is they will be over the rotational complex and they need to all be connecting. So you don't wanna put them in a checkerboard pattern or anything, they need to all be connected. So we have three right here, we can throw them down wherever we want on this layer as long as they're connecting with the one over the center. Um, and then the condensers can fill in the rest of the area. Obviously you might not need this many condensers, you might need more coils, you might need less, you might want less condensers. Really it's up to you what you think you're gonna need for your build. But what we're gonna do now is fill in down here with turbine vents as we go around like so and we're going to do it again up here so we're going to fill in the corners and we're going to do turbine vents right here corners again and we should actually do this um 
all the way up. So we're actually going to cover the top while we go around outside of the top like that. And when we get to the other side, we are going to put down the very top layer also as turbine vents. So like that, fill this in, fill that in. And then this is going to be vents right here. And then casing, of course, like we said, all the way around the perimeter of it. So there we go. And now you can see that it is fully formed. So we were able to click on it right in there. Something that really does annoy me is that this structural glass does not uh, become borderless when you end up finalizing this. So uh, I'm bothered by that. I don't know if other people are, but when you look in here now, it's got uh, a UI that comes up and you can see that we are producing zero joules. The flow rate is zero millibuckets per tick. Its capacity is 8 million millibuckets and its max flow rate, which as we know, in this case, it's talking about the steam flow rate is 1 million 56,000 millibuckets per tick. And that is determined by the size and the number of vents that we have. Now, if we go to the statistics, you can see that it's going to be awesome and tell us the limiting factor. So in these, you have steam flow and you have the production. So like we talked about, the coils can support up to 12 blades. So the limiting factor in production is the blades themselves. We could add two more blades without touching the coils and increase the production without having to, like I said, add more coils. In the steam flow, you have uh, eight dispersers and 33 vents. The vents themselves are going to be the limiting factor for that. Then you have the max production listed and the max water output. Now the max water output is what's determined by the condensers. And in this case, what we can hook it up to, the fission reactor that is able to be supported by this is going to be limited by whichever one of the outputs um, is going to be less. So in this case are the flow rates, I should say. So in this case, we've got on the front of it, we've got the max flow rate of the steam is 1, 000, or 1 million millibuckets per tick. The max flow rate of the water is 384,000 millibuckets per tick. So in this case, the lower one is the max flow rate of the water. And so that is going to be the limiting factor for the rate at which we are able to process steam and get it back into uh, liquid and then get it back into our fission reactor. And so an idea for this is if you're cooling the fission reactor with water, making it into steam, then condensing the steam and making it back into water because you are using 20,000 millibuckets uh, of water to uh, deal with the uh, burn rate, 20,000 millibuckets of water per millibucket of fizzle fuel burned per tick, you can determine the max burn rate that you are able to support using your industrial turbine by taking whichever one of these is lower. In this case, it's going to be the max water output and it's going to be the 384,000 millibuckets per tick divided by 20,000 millibuckets per tick. So you can find out how much water you can have consistently flowing through this. And I believe it comes out at 19.2. And so that is going to be the statistically the max burn rate we are able to support while consistently cycling the amount of required water through our machine and back. So anything over that, and we will not be able to process the required water to cool this off in time and actually get it back. And this will start overheating. So very critical thing to keep in mind, while the power is going to be the most important thing that you're probably going to care about out the gate with making sure that you're generating the most power possible, having the largest blades possible in there, really the important thing that you keep in mind is you need to make sure that you are able to match the amount of water that's going to be required for this that's coming out of this and needs to go back in to keep it at a steady temperature. So what we can do now is hook up this valve right here to the... Uh, we'll do the pressurized tube right here and the mechanical pipe that we're going to be using is going to come right out the top so we can go like this and run it along the side here. And if we connect it there, you can see it goes right in there. So the water is going to come out from there. And that means that we are able to get rid of this bad boy right here, which is great because that looks hideous. I hated having this here. So we are able to ditch this and we'll just leave this power running over here. Uh, that's fine because eventually we're going to connect it to our power setup over there. So we will cover this up like so. There we go. And we are able to then take the pressurized tube and connect it 
right over here. So there we go. And you can see that we should be able to get steam going in here. And I'm actually going to bring this down one. So like that. And you can see now that we have steam in our setup here. And you can see that uh, we are actually generating power from it. Now, I don't know why the turbine is not moving visually in there. I don't know if it's a setting I have or it's just there's so little steam that it's you can't even see it moving. I don't know. Um, but we should be able to have water coming out of this then as it's being processed. Um, and you can see it's, it's very slowly going down uh, and we have no steam input, but you're getting a significant amount of power from it. So we should be able to activate this over here and have the system actually run. Now, an important thing to remember is once this is full on power, it will not run anymore. So it is able to store 3.6 gigajoules of power, but when it fills up, it's going to stop running. So you better have somewhere for that power to go uh, or else you are going to blow up your reactor so we're going to activate this it's super loud i know um but this should start sending a lot of steam over here and okay yeah so i guess it was not at the minimum amount of steam in here to actually get a visual turning on this but if we look over here you can see the temperature is steady the heating rate is steady uh now what we can do is up the burn rate so we'll set it to the max burn rate and you can see the temp goes up but after that, the heating rate steady, burn rate obviously at maximum, temperature steady, and now we're really getting some, some turning going on over here. So we got our steam input, which is nowhere near the maximum that we are able to handle with this. We've got our internal amount of steam. We've got our flow rate, which of course is the same as what the heating rate is over there, which of course is the 20, it's a little bit under 20, but it's basically 20 millibuckets per tick which matches up with the millibuckets per tick of fizzle fuel consumed, the production, like we said, a little bit under the 7.14 times 10 for the number of blades we have, which is great. And you can see that we are getting some serious power going on over here. And that is with the smallest reactor we could possibly make over here. And the important thing to look at is just that the coolant is in fact steady over here. And you can see it's just ticking back and forth a very small amount, um, but that's it. So now we have a working system. Now I'm very sorry, that was probably extremely loud, but I think this looks absolutely awesome. Um, this is a great way to generate power. Obviously we can make this significantly better on both sides, but what we're gonna go over next episode is going to be how to store the immense amount of power you are going to get from this setup. So we'll come over here, we'll turn this off for now. We do not need this power right now and we do not need that absolutely destroying our ears, but uh, hopefully you guys were able to learn sufficient amount to be able to set up your own. You know, no matter what you're using it for, no matter what size, you know, fission reactor you might be using, you will be able to make a sufficient turbine for your needs. And like I said, next episode, we are going to probably go over the induction matrix where we are going to pull out our power. And I believe it's another multi-block structure that's going to allow us to store a significant amount of this power to make sure that we never hit a point where we blow this thing up and subsequently our whole base. Now, one thing I do want to say is for those of you that are looking forward to create videos, the next episode is going to be a create episode, and we're going to be going over a very, very complicated movable quarry that we're going to set up. So if you're wondering why we've been doing two mechanism videos and then only one create video, it's because right now the mechanism ones are significantly easier to plan out and set up than it is with create. So I've been working for like a week and a half to get the create one ready. Um, and so that should be the next video. But I know a lot of you guys are wondering why there is that gap. So I thought I'd let you know my reasoning behind it. But that's going to be it for today, guys. I suspect you'll probably have questions in the comments. So always feel free to post them. But in this case, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will have some. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. And I will talk to you later.